Hello and welcome to part two of looking at my bush. Well, the Bush VHF81 anyway. So on the bench is the Bush radio and I've done a few things since the last video. Not a great deal, but then I've been saving myself. No, in reality, I've had other things to do, so I've been sort of slacking on the bush, really. But I think we're getting to a stage where it's, it's as close as we're going to get. If I bring you back to the bench, you can see it in front of you. And I've got it up this way for now because I wanted some way of holding it vertically and not resting on the tubes or the IF cans. Because the whole thing's built on a single chassis, as we saw in the last video. So all I've done is I've put a pair of G-clamps onto the chassis, not touching anything critical, they're, they're directly grounded. Now, obviously, if the set is live, these do become part of the electrical circuit as well. So we're going to try not to touch them if we can avoid it. What have I done? Well, there are a couple of obvious things. You've probably noticed a complete lack of dust and dirt on this. Well, I've done that. The tubes are now nice and shiny, and I've done that. I've also checked the capacitors, uh, this one here, this one, this one, and they were all fine, no leakage at all. I did change the three Hunts capacitors. There's two here and one on the other side. And if I just get them out of my collecting crap bin, these are the ones that came out that one has got a hole in it. This one is black and sooty and melted. So I think it was time that they came out. So I just kept them to show you. Now, what I've done on the other side, the capacitor that I have changed is here, under here. So comes across from this IF can going through to the ground there. Again, it was a Hunt capacitor. That was the one that just didn't look very good had a small hole in it, so I've changed that. This one was the one I was worried about, this one here. Now this is the coupling capacitor between the first audio stage and the audio output tube. And if this one was leaky at all, we could kill the audio tube. And I don't particularly want to do that, but it's not leaky, so I've left it in there. I've checked a lot of these resistors, and these are all within tolerance. I wouldn't say they were all perfect, but I was trying to disturb this set as little as possible. Bit of a clean up. Uh, I've got the two panel bulbs out because I want to check them. These are actually wired in series. So if one goes out, both goes out. So you can't just say, well, the lights are out, they're both dead. So the way to do that is, as everybody who does this sort of thing will tell you, is you get your meter, you turn it on, we get the beep and test one. So that one's blown. But that's a good one. So yeah, testing them individually, best thing to do there. This is the plastic that goes on the back of the face. It actually goes in here. And then you have the glass that goes over the top. So I've removed all this just for cleaning and testing purposes. Now that is a bit of the foam which has come from these pads. These were originally a, a foam pad, but the, the plastic has deteriorated to to zero and I'll have to replace those with something. Uh, the glass I've cleaned up, not perfectly at this point, but I have cleaned it up. And where the foam was, and you can see here, the paint is actually missing from the back. So the way I'm going to cure that is I'm going to just turn that over, get a Sharpie, and I'm just going to draw in the black. I don't want to use any solvents. I don't want to use any chemicals. I could use spray paint, 
which may give a more solid finish, but I just want to check that this will do what I want without using any sort of anything that could dissolve the lettering underneath. Now it's starting to fill it in, it's not perfect, but it is looking slightly better. So it may need something else, maybe a bit of enamel paint. Uh, the same the same round these controls where you can see that the the black is missing from this part of the the glass. Now something's been rubbing there where it's not been in the right place, which is why you've got an eccentric hole rather than a, a nice round concentric hole. And the same here. This has also been It looks a bit better. It's not perfect at this stage, but as I say, we can we can work on this. We can fill it in. That I can do off camera, but uh, we'll we'll have a look at that uh, a little bit later on. I did a basic electrical test in the last video and checked through. I have done a filament circuit check again, and that's good. The one thing we were worried about was the on-off switch, and We've come away really lucky, to be quite honest. I found that it just needed a clean. So if you just look at the back of that switch, I'm going to operate the on-off switch, if I can get it round. And you can see the switch contacts now sliding across. So that was a bonus. OK, I think we've done enough waffling. I think we're ready to actually power this up. We, we've, we've got as far as we're going to go without actually testing something properly. The first thing I'm going to test before I plug the radio in, though, is I'm going to test my dim bulb tester. Now, it's something I do every time before I actually power something up because I don't know if moving it has blown the bulb it, it could have done so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in the dim bulb tester and because I've got the dead short plug in place it lights up nice and brightly so I'm going to remove that that's just a standard UK plug with a dead short between live and neutral for some strange reason I have to keep that one separate in case I put it into an ordinary main socket wouldn't do me any favors what I've also got is my isolation transformer. So that's actually fired up. Coming into the isolation transformer, this is what's powering it up. Now you can see it says no earth. So we have an empty space. Let's plug this in and see what happens with the dim bulb. Absolutely nothing because we haven't got the radio switched on yet. So let's listen for the click. I'm going to put the volume up full just in case, just for the fun of it really. I've got a speaker there, it's not the original but it's a speaker. The bulb is glowing slightly, it's just faded out again so that's capacitors charged up and we're just waiting for the whole thing to warm up. The bulb's starting to glow again, now that's happening because the filaments of the valves are now warming up and becoming less resistive. So there's now more current flowing through the bulb and the unit. And at this point, all I'm looking for is, at the moment, to get some noise out of it to check that the output stage is working. There's obviously no short circuits, otherwise the bulb would have glowed very brightly, same as with the dead short plug-in. It is glowing brighter, so the resistance is going down on the, on the tubes. Right, OK, so we've powered it up and we've got buzzing. And I'm just going to go through and see if we can hear anything. And we can't. And there's a very good reason for that. 
what we've got here is we've got a set that is running set at 250 volts input so it's running its full dropping resistor and our main supply is only 230 volts and we're running through the dim bulb tester so we're not actually getting anywhere near enough voltage to the set to make it work properly so what I'm going to do at this point I know I'm getting buzzing so I've got an audio stage working let's unplug the set from the dim bulb tester and plug it directly into the isolation transformer and hopefully it should warm up a lot quicker so take out the dim bulb tester put the let's switch to medium wave Now the reason I'm turning it is obviously we've only got the rod antenna on this set. There is no external. George Stockwell took the catch. Uh, it really was an amazing piece of fielding, diving to his left two-handed. So the target 199, England the 34 for one in the eighth over. Uh, thank you very much indeed. I suppose one of the worries, just going back to that penny and two pennies, if you buy something for 56, if you didn't have pennies, would the shopkeeper round it up to 60? Uh, give us your thoughts, 85058 at BBC5 Live. So there's another station there. It's five o'clock on Five Live. It's Drive with Claire McDonald and Tony Livesey. Our main story, Theresa May feels the pressure from her own party after big Tory losses in the local elections. That doesn't sound good for our government, does it? Slash travel. Georgia loves her new puppy, and he loves... So... We're definitely getting medium wave. So Georgia sold her heels on eBay for a max one pound selling fee. And with all the money she... Let's try FM. We don't want to listen to eBay adverts, do we? Now, FM on this set is typical of the UK's backwards technology. Um, we only had 88, well, 87.5 to 100 and 1.5 megahertz right up until the the mid 80s early 90s i think it was it might have even been later so i'm just trying to go through now of course this might not work because i haven't got an aerial in place right so now we have an aerial for fm So we've got a dirty socket. So got some very badly auto-tuned music there. So the set is actually working. Just turn it down a bit. Obviously with the very rough shot antenna we've got in there. I'm not ex typical. <laughs> the dial cord's just broken. So there's another little job I've got to do. Right. <laughs> With that, I'm going to... I think I'm going to call this video the end because obviously the dial cord job is something we all absolutely love doing. Not. It's a good job I've got the diagram for wiring this and the lengths and everything else. Yeah. Um, 
So we've got a working radio. It works on the three bands as far as I can see. Obviously, we'll have still a little bit of work to do. Once I do the dial cord, we can then get back to making sure everything is as it should be. With that, I'm going to say up there will be part one of this series. And hopefully, if you haven't seen it, you'll check that one out. Down here, down here, here will be something else that YouTube thinks you'll like. And I hope if you've liked this video, you'll click like, you'll click subscribe, you'll ring the bell icon for all those notifications, and I appreciate it. Thank you very much for watching, and hopefully we'll see you again for part three of the bush, and maybe even before part three, we'll put something else out. Thanks very much, and we'll see you all soon. Bye for now.